Okay, so here we are back uh, at uh, you know, Bible and Blues, and we're going back to mandolin. I want to show you something here. I mentioned before, I have two mandolins, two very distinctly different style mandolins. This one is an F style. This one is an A style, okay? Now, they do sound different. Each one sounds a little different. Now, the, it, now I'm going to kind of focus on this one for a minute because this one has a problem. And I was actually, this is actually my what, third attempt at this video. So, uh, hang on a second here. I put this in a safe, that in a safe spot. This one has a real problem. Um, this is, a, uh, and it's not the manufacturer's fault necessarily. It's my fault for not paying attention because this can happen to virtually any, any uh, instrument. But if you look at it, you'll see right there is a separation of the neck heel to the body. Okay, and what that has caused. As you look at those strings, I'm going to try to, there we go. I'm going to hold it there steady. You see those strings are pretty high up. Makes it uncomfortable to play. And, of course, if the, if the neck is moving, okay, you cannot keep it in tune either. Okay, which is really too bad. Uh, you know, I bought this thing. It's kind of an impulse buy when I was uh, visiting my friend Paul down in Portland. And, um... Yeah, you know, it's I, I liked it. I always like the, the I always like the style. I like the scroll style, and they're usually pretty expensive. This one is a really good deal, and get what you pay for. So uh, I'm not going to take this to a luthier for repair because, to be honest, it's a uh, it's it's not really a high end no matter what. I think if I called this a two hundred dollar mandolin, I think I'd be shooting high on it. Uh, that's my furnace just kicked on, sorry. And we're going to um, turn that that down. I can do it with my phone, which is kind of neat. Um, and so the uh, so, so this one was it, it was it was an impulse purchase. I probably didn't do enough research. I probably didn't look at it close enough. Uh, and this is where I'm at now. I have one that's it's essentially a wall hanger at this time, at this point. I'll need to, uh, you know, take the strings off, uh, do some research to study up how to properly repair that. Okay. And uh, if you look real close at that, I'm going to get this nice and, nice and close. Uh, if you look real close at that, you can see where the damage is. And if you look at the string height, I'll show you the string height of the other one. You can see it to uh, make a difference on that. Uh, see what the difference is. And it's a playability issue for starters, but it's also how, how well it stays in tune. And that damage is just going to continue on uh, to this thing if I just if I if I ignore it. So there's that one. So here's my other one. This is uh, this is the one that's not damaged in any way. Uh, this wasn't an expensive mandolin. This was um, like $180, I think. It was under $200. Uh, but you look at you look, you look at this one here, and you can see the heel is nice and tight. Uh, there's absolutely no seam or issue there, uh, you know, happening. You can see the paint is still the stain or lacquer is still there, and you can see how much closer those strings are to the fretboard. Which makes it much more playable, uh, much easier to play. Um, I use this. <laughs> four minutes into this, just talking about that. I used this uh, in a um, in a video a while back, and it was uh, regarding. Uh, it was just it was just an initial tag for uh, my guitars and Galatians, which I need to do another one of those videos. I'm I'm way behind. I actually should have been done with that study by now, but I took about a two month sabbatical from for some reason. Um, and I use it as a tag and, you know, it's, and it's a fun instrument, but I played horribly because I hadn't picked the thing up in, in over a year at the time. And, you know, you, if you, if you leave an instrument sitting there for too long and you don't play it, uh, you know, if it's a, a different kind of instrument, you, you lose some of that. But, and I'm somebody that tends to focus on one instrument at a time when I, you know, really could just kind of do a little round robin and really get good things going. 
Um, but uh, so long story short, my worship director is interested in me using mandolin uh, in uh, in on um, at church, and I'd love to be able to do that. But the only video I had to offer was that one. And I really don't play very well in that particular video. So um, I'm making this one partially for that reason. Uh, partially because, yeah, I, did, I spent uh, I spent a week practicing, and uh, it does come back very quickly. The whole uh, process, uh, the learning process, uh, getting your fingers to do things again uh, works really well. Uh, I I did download a couple of chord charts, and um, I'll show those to you as I go. Uh, uh, so, well, yeah, here. This one's actually really easy. Uh, uh, this is, and the, the source is right there on it, so, you know, there you go. Uh, shows nice, basic, open chord tunings, open chords, and um, which is nice. It's easy for us, to, for us those of us who are uh, beginners, uh, to learn how to do. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's really, I like it. Uh, and then there's this other one. This one right here, which uh, now this one uh, is kind of neat because it does show a lot of different. It, it's it hit, you have some sevenths here, you have more minor chords up here. Uh, um, now right here is this one right here is a B chord. Uh, that's a difficult chord for me at this point. This is as it's not comfortable for me to get my fingers fingers to work. And then we get in further in this E chord right here. Um, I. I'll show you that voicing. That voicing is not, uh, doesn't feel like an E at all. Um, but uh, down here in the sevenths, the sevenths are fun. Uh, look at that B7. If you know your guitar B7, you're looking at the same shape. I mean, okay, in the guitar B7, we skip a string, things like that. But this is, this is the exact same basic shape of your fingers. Okay. And uh, what about the E minor? Let's look at uh, what's about E minor. Yeah, E minor, right, right there. Okay, that's an E minor. That's the same essential fingering that we use on uh, on the guitar. So I think that's uh, that's really neat. That's those those a couple of those do it. Most of them don't. But uh, you know, without further ado, hey, you know we're we're almost we're seven and a half eight minutes into this video, and you haven't even heard me play this thing. Uh, so here. Let's uh let's do this a little bit. Unique thing about uh what I have going on here is I only have one microphone to my name. But it's uh this will work out. You can hear me somewhat. So uh for a D chord. You have a finger on the top, second fret, and on the bottom, second fret. Throw a little hammer on some pull offs in there. Was a D a D two? That's D D minor seven. Is right here. Wish my chords on some of these, but if you wanted to do a basic one four five of uh, in G, I mean that's actually pretty simple. Is G, G is third finger, you know, second finger on the th on the third fret for the for the uh, for your E string, and then up one, second fret, second se second course of strings. That's a G. C is you just shift the whole thing up one set. Okay, and then say you wanted to go, you know, drop an F into that thing. Because suddenly you're playing in, uh, you're in a, you're in a bridge and you're playing in the key of C now, so it's a. Oop, <laughs> that was good. So 
that's real simple chords right there. I mean, the chords are actually pretty simple to, to do here. I'm just kind of looking at the chord chart, kind of thinking about what I want to do next. Uh, you know, it's a key of A. Uh, you know, um, you know, key of A is uh, A D E, right? And so let's uh, let's examine those just real briefly. Of, of an A. Okay, and that is I'm barring with my with with this the pad of my finger on these top two strings here, and then I'm think you know, and then I'm using my uh, ring finger on the fourth fret. Okay. I, talk, I mentioned the E, and I'm gonna. Here's here's the E as it shows on on this uh, this one. Actually, I like the rest of it, but for the most part. But uh, uh, but you see this one here. You look at that E there. Um, so you look at that E on there. Okay. So that E, I'm not really comfortable with playing. This is what, this is what it sounds like here. Uh, make sure I have it right. Yep, I do. That doesn't sound like an E. That sounds like a minor of some kind. So uh, this other one, though, you look at the E on this, and you know the E on this sounds much. There you go. It's a much better sounding E. Okay. Um, so that is once again the pad, and there we are. I could go with that right there. I haven't really. So you can hear that change, that shift from major to minor. And no, I'm not trying to flip you off. So, um, so let's talk about scales just a little bit. Uh, scales, there's a lot of good scales. I, you know, I have one major, you know, one scale that I use a lot. Uh, I'm not even sure what the name of it is. Uh, I saw it on a video once and practice it. If I could uh, remember and find that video, I'd, I'd tag it in the in the description below. But it's um, it's the same. Get the microphone down there. That's uh, more important than my voice. Uh, but if you if you set this one upright, um, you can actually work your way down the neck fairly well because here's your here's your root. There's your root. your root again well there's enough room on the mandolin to start that whole and so that whole one was in the key of E uh, you know is that that was So, yeah, so you can work that one quite a ways down. <clears throat> I, uh, you know, the, this is a good mandolin. I mean, this is a, this Ibanez here, I got this one for about uh, 180, 190 bucks. 
uh, at that uh, Box Music Store uh, Guitar Center. It's a, it's a, it's a chain. It's a, it's a huge conglomeration. It's, you know, people hate it. People love it. Um, I like going in there because they let me take anything off the wall and play. Uh, you know, whether I can play it well or not, and they, they, I don't think they're worried about damage either. It's just kind of scary. Uh, so, anyway. So that's uh, that, that's the basic uh, basic scale there for you. Uh, one of the things I wanted to do for you though is I wanted to play. You've, you've heard the you've heard the song Washerwoman. If you don't know what the title is, you've heard the song. Um, so I wanted to uh, do that one for you. I'm not very good at it. I fumble a lot, and and uh, you know it's one of those ones I I, I I haven't looked at the tabs for it in uh, in over a year. So I just had to kind of well, how did that go? Uh, so but anyway, so here we go. I'm gonna do Washerwoman. Out of all the times I did this, uh, did that thing trying to trying to make this video, that's the best one. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, that's the that's that's your your mandolin. That's uh, it's a great, it's a fun instrument. You can pick one up for relatively inexpensive. When I bought this one, I was actually Ibanez makes one that has a magnetic pickup in it, and I was actually wanted to get that one uh, just because I like to put effects on things and stuff like that. Um, uh, but you know, I, I got this one here, and, and it doesn't have a pickup in it, and I really like it. It's inexpensive. It's a plywood top. You're not looking at a solid a solid spruce top here. Yeah, it's a plywood. It's got three layers there. Um, you know, I was just looking at the F-hole, in the F-hole there. Uh, I can see three layers in there. And you know what? It sounds pretty good. Um, you know, people 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 crap on the, uh, the plywood top instruments, but... Uh, you know, I've always, uh, I, I've kind of had good luck with them for the most part. It, some of them sound pretty good. Uh, this one's a little on the dusty side. Yes, I know. Um, bad Cameron. Uh, you should clean your instruments more. Oh, well, look at how filthy that tailpiece is. Look at that. You know, that wouldn't take much to clean, really. Uh, so that's the long and short of it. I hope you really enjoyed this. I, I sure did. It was, um, uh, I've, I've, I've been trying to get this video out all day long, but... I think uh, if if you can find one at a good price, um, you should. Uh, there's some vintage out there that uh, are just incredible. Um, uh, eventually, I do plan on, you know, repairing uh, this thing here. I think it's going to be a good lesson for me. It's going to be a good practice thing. Uh, I'm not a luthier. Um, I build cigar box guitars, and I build, you know, I. I I'm willing to change tune, you know, the tuning machines, change pickups, change bridge. I'm willing to get in there and do that kind of stuff. This would actually be uh, probably the most complex repair I've actually done um, for something like this. And uh, uh, you know, so that heel there really it needs to be replaced. I'm just and um, or, or fixed. So if you have some advice for that, I don't think it's going to be that tough. Obviously, take the strings off. I'm going to need to uh, I'll find a way to clamp this safely uh, from you know, from here to here uh, to squeeze that together. Once I have the glue in there, how much I'm going to have to clean it up, I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm not going to do anything with the finish, I don't think. Um, but uh, I'll just uh, you know make sure the glue doesn't uh, bead out and look horrible. Uh, that's probably my plan. But uh, yeah, isn't isn't around to it. I have a car out in the outside. <laughs> Out in the garage with a, I have to pull the transmission on it to fix the clutch on. That's kind of a higher priority than this. Um, but eventually we'll get her done. And when I do it, I'm hoping to take some pictures at least. Uh, so I can do a slideshow for you. Um, so that's uh, that's my plans for the future. So hey, uh, uh, if you like what I'm doing here, uh, you, know, you know, give me a, give me a thumbs up. Uh, make sure you like over here and you, know, you know like it and subscribe. I've got a little tiny subscribe button right over here. 
And I, you know, go ahead and click on that little tiny button. I keep it unobtrusive. Uh, so make sure you like and subscribe and enjoy, uh, enjoy you watching. I enjoy making these videos for you. Uh, um, this is kind of a beginner thing for me because I'm not, I'm, I'm not real, well versed in mandolin, but I really enjoy it. And I think it's a, I think it's an instrument that people, uh, should give more credence to. Uh, I'm hoping, uh, this little video here will, uh, I'll be able to get, uh, get this thing out there onto the, uh, stage at uh, church for the worship team. And, uh, so anyway, uh, God bless, um, have a great Saturday and, uh, we'll talk at you later.